Dr. Carson, you were telling us about the difference between humans and animals and how we have the capacity to look beyond the superficial. Now, in your lifetime, you've seen a change. You also shared with us a little bit of the history that's taken place. Tell a little of your personal story as you relate it in the book. Well, you know, when I was uh, much younger, when I was a kid, it was not unusual to see blatant uh, acts of racism occurring. Uh, you know, I was a terrible student, fifth grade, started changing that significantly in the sixth grade. By the seventh grade, I was at the top of the class. And as the only black student, um, you know, it created a little bit of a problem for some of the teachers. The kids were fine with it. They'd seen me make this metamorphosis. They knew me as Ben, not as this black kid. Right. And um, I remember when I was uh, in the eighth grade, and I give a special academic award for the student with the highest academic achievement. And I said, I got this. <laughs> and you would take a report card to each teacher, and they would put their grade on it. And I got to the last class. I had all A's. And the last one was band, and I was very good in band, so I knew that was an A. And the turkey gave me a C to ruin my report Just card to, to make sure that I didn't award. get the award. But to his chagrin, it turns out band didn't count. Ah. <laughs> so I got the award anyway. And at the award ceremony, one of the teachers got up and chastised the white kids. You're not trying hard enough. There's no way this black kid from a single parent home should have done better than you. Um, and it just means that you're not working hard enough. Now, I don't really hold that against her. She was a product of her time. And I, I make that point frequently in the book. A lot of things that happen, sometimes we look at them and interpret them in very negative ways. Um, but people tend to react based on what their life experience has been. Mm -hmm. So when I would go onto the ward in the hospital in 1977 as an intern, uh, there had been very few, if any, black men on the ward in scrubs who were anything other than orderly. Okay. So they would say, you know, Mr. Jones isn't ready to be taken to the OR yet. Now, I could have gotten angry and huffy and said, well, I'm a doctor. I didn't do that. I just said, well, gee, I'm sorry he's not ready to be taken to the OR. I'm Dr. Carson. I'm here to see. And they would turn 18 shades of red, and I would be very nice to them. And I have a friend for life. And <laughs> they never make that mistake again. Well, what you're kind of saying, and I think what you said in the book is, racism isn't born, it's learned. It is. And, uh, and so many children you know, have a wonderful time with each other. It's just, and then along comes a parent saying, you can't play with them. You can't do that. You know, we're better than those people. I mean, just why, why do adults have to do that? Boy, wouldn't it be nice if, if we all sort of had that childlike love for each other? And uh, that's why Jesus said in the Bible, a little child shall lead them. Mm. Because they, they get so twisted as they grow up and all of these things start happening and they're, they're completely not necessary.